Welcome in to CBS Sports HQ. It is time for Power Rankings presented by FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Make every moment more. I'm Jacqueline D'Agostino alongside Amanda Guerra. Of course, we have Pete Prisco here and Kyle Long because it is time for Power Rankings. We've already been picking them apart 10, 15 minutes before the show, Pete. Well, that's what everybody does. They come out in the morning and everybody spends their entire day picking them apart. And I sit here and get picked apart with them. So it's, it's a, it's a normal it for, we Tuesday. We did it for an hour together. <laughs> oh, no, already. Oh, no. But what did you say? We're all entitled to our wrong opinion? You, are, you all are entitled to your wrong opinion. So. Yeah. <laughs> Do you I know mean, what, what your wrong right. opinions Everybody's was? Everybody's got them and they all stick. It, well, I don't know if Kyle knows about this. So we're we're going to show Pete's power rankings here like in a second, but really quickly, uh, and we're going to get into the game last night. Do you know about Pete's prediction for the Bengals? What's your prediction for the Bengals, Pete? On the, on the day Joe Burrow was drafted, I said he would win one Super Bowl in the next 10 years and maybe two. And, okay. And Brady, they all took it and said I said two, and we found the tape and I didn't say two. Either way, we'll get into the Bengals later and see what you think about that prediction. Let's talk about the game we saw last night. Look, if you were a fantasy manager with Christian McCaffrey, I am very sorry that was a rough night for you. But no CMC on the field is no problem for the 49ers. The return of a 40-year-old Aaron Rodgers fell flat for the Jets. The problems on both sides of the ball. The Jets' defense didn't have any answers, especially against the run. There was inconsistencies on offense. So where do these teams now rank in Pete Prisco's power rankings? We look forward to it every single Tuesday. Pete, how much did you drop the Jets? Well, I dropped them pretty much because I'm worried about their defense. I dropped them down to 13, and, and the defense didn't play very well. You know, we were all concerned about Aaron Rodgers and the offensive line and would they hold up on the offensive line. But the most concerning thing coming out of that game was the defense. Oh. This is supposed to be yeah. a dominant defense, and they they were run on and run on and run on, and it didn't stop. And it, that's bad luck. Kyle, anything glaring in this power rankings that just got you heated this morning? Well, not really heated. I got a couple thoughts here. The Arizona Cardinals, I think the bottom of that list there is all about uh, quarterback play and whether okay. you have them or you don't. I think the Cardinals have a quarterback in Kyler Murray. I think they're a little bit too far down the list there. Pete and I talked about that today. I think the only team that I think is right perfect where they should be, Baltimore Ravens. Obviously, tough loss. That's the only thing that's one. Tough loss. I don't think the Chiefs are the best team. Tough loss week one, but, you know, it's against the reigning Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs. So There's wait, not a lot to glean from wait, that. Wait, so the Chiefs being number one, the Chiefs homer doesn't think they should be number hey, look, one? The only thing's worth noting, I said, for those <laughs> no, two things Did he right say there. it was the only thing that he I got right? He said you, the only thing you got right was the Ravens in their <laughs> spot right there. <laughs> You're number one in the power ranking. There I know you I go. I know I am. So let's dive into the Jets. You dropped them to 13, and you talked about the defense. This is a defense last season that was hailed as one of the best in the NFL. They allowed eight scoring drives. Pete, biggest takeaways from the defense and then also that guy right there. I didn't like the scheme, I'll be honest with you. And, and in the Super Bowl, you saw the Chiefs with their press man corners play eight men in the box and kind of take away those quick throws, and it really limited what the 49ers could do. I thought the Jets would come out and do the exact same thing. They have arguably the best combination of cornerbacks in the league, three of them, and they didn't do it. And they couldn't stop the run. The eighth man didn't get down, didn't stop the run. I thought they had a bad scheme, and they got pushed around uh, up front on the defense line. Was Quentin Williams anywhere to be found after the first play? Oh, I mean, he was, he was a no-show. So I think that's the most concerning thing for me is the, is the scheme wasn't good, I didn't think, and I think they got pushed around a little bit. Obviously, great to see Jordan Mason, 24. I just love his style of running. And for the San Francisco 49ers, the strength stay strong. It's the offense, the ability to do all kinds of things. Dominic Puny, the right guard, allows them now to run the ball to the right side. They can run it to the left, obviously, with Trent Williams. But to your point, the Jets' defense, we're still waiting for them to get off the plane in Santa Clara. They just did not show up for this football game. They're, they're a unit that you can set your watch to. And I'm sure Jets fans did. I did here on the desk. I picked the Jets. They didn't show up defensively. Aaron looked good enough for me, though. I'm not really that concerned. I was going to say, give me a grade for Aaron Rodgers. I'd say uh, B. B-, B-, minus. B-, okay. B-, B minus. Yeah. Right. There's some throws he wants back, for sure. <laughs> but I, here's the other thing about Aaron Rodgers. They didn't let him throw enough. Okay. And, and on early downs, I thought they came into the game and they were going to try to run the ball. And he just did. <laughs> he looked a li- I'm going to be honest with you. He looked a little tentative, too. It, 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 Rodgers usually gets around and gets outside the pocket and scrambles and throws on the run. He didn't do a lot of that. And on one handoff, one deep handoff, he almost looked like he had problems getting there. And so it was a little 
a little disjointed. 40 coming off an injury, a lot of question marks there, but the one thing that we did see is the arm still works. The guy's eyes and his brain still work. He's obviously got a great mind for football. The ball was out, the ball was on time. Stubbing your toe often on drops on third downs, that's what got him early. And then you're in a two possession game against this Niners team was running the ball at will. It just spelled disaster. 63 and I had shingles this off season. I'm here. <laughs> 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 Thanks for sharing, Pete. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie. TMI I was, Tuesdays. I was, I was counting the, the snaps, and once we got to four or five, I was like holding my breath. I felt I felt sick. But um, we're going to go to, to the Packers because a lot of folks were picking the Jets as their bold prediction to win the Super Bowl. And Pete, this is was your pick to win the Super Bowl ahead of the season, but a, a lot going on in this game. It was ugly uh, Friday night in Brazil. Now Jordan Love dealing with this MCL sprain. What do you make of what we saw from the Packers? I was a little disappointed, to be honest with okay. you. It's a hard game to evaluate for me, though, in large part because that field. It was yeah. so awful. The field was terrible. Delicious. And I think the field made it tough for pass rushers to rush the passer. It made it tough for guys to cover on the back end. People were slipping all over the place. It was almost like playing on ice. And Saquon slipped the first time he touched the it football. It was terrible. And, and, and you know, as an Even offensive Even when they lineman, were running, it looked like they started to try to be, like, a little bit more conservative. With how they were, I mean, people, their legs were slipping out from under them going forward. It was awful. It was awful. And, and, and as an offensive lineman, that's an advantage for you because the guys can't get traction yeah, and rush and the e pass. Even if there is a bull rush from a right. defensive lineman, you can't put your feet in the ground. Like, you know, when, it, when you try to pick a cat up and they kind of throw their claws in the ground like you're not picking me up. <laughs> I that's do know Jacqueline, that well. I Jacqueline know that and well. Pete have so cats. That's you what know that well. There are cats on bull rushes. You want to be able to get, get your out cleats out in the ground. There was no ground. There's no true surface to get your footing on. And it just was ugly across the board. So it's so you got to kind of throw that out a little bit, but the fact that the Packers have dropped down in my power rankings is in large part because the quarterback's hurt. If he's out for four to six weeks, they're done. They're done. I, I just can't see how they navigate that long through. or that that little of time I mean if it's six weeks and he has to play and Malik Willis has to play five games they'll probably win maybe they have to win at least two of them to have and I don't know if he can but and, do you think and, they would lean on him or go out and get somebody else for the backup position well, right uh, right now they're leaning the on him option, yeah. he's their guy <laughs> and, and that's always concerning him I mean he was not very good last year he, I will say this he was much better when I saw him in training camp, and okay. he was much better in the tape you watched in the preseason. He looked a l uh, improved, but how much improved remains to be seen. So the Packers also had some defensive issues, but again, I go back to the field. I think the field had impact on that. The fact he even couldn't even get a, a Hail Mary off, though, is a little concerning. Brutal. Yeah. Um, but either way, it, it's week one, and like you said, it was a disgusting game. Let's go to the Bengals. Uh, you dropped them to 16th, losing to the Patriots. This is a team that had a four and a half win total set so they're well on their way pete what do you make of the Bengals? that was not a good look for them and they're staring zero and two in the face i mean i know joe burrow is the patrick mahomes killer as they like to say but they go on the road and play that team that's tough to do they were flat offensively and now they there's talk that chase had a virus or something before the game uh we didn't know if he was going to play or not t higgins wasn't there the offensive line which was rebuilt it wasn't very good and defensively they weren't great so i think you add it all up there is cause for concern in in, in cincinnati because we thought joe burrow coming back would fix everything well he didn't yeah burrow healthy with some continuity with guys like t higgins this offseason jamar chase being the hold in a lot of stuff a lot of balls in the air for cincinnati bengals and you know what it really came down to stopping the run for the Cincinnati Bengals. They were not able to do it. The Patriots, the team that was just disrespected all week, they went out, they pinned their ears back, and they said, come and stop us, boys. We're going to run this football. Good job by the Patriots. I don't have a ton of concern down the stretch with this Bengals team because, to your point, a lot of star power on that offense. They're going to get healthier. Uh, T. Higgins will be back. Jamar Chase will be in lockstep with Joe Burrow. They'll be back up. Do you, do you want to adjust your prediction from like however many years ago at this point? What prediction? <laughs> About the Super Bowl. What, what kind of prediction did you make? What the hell are you talking about? I don't about? remember what you guys were talking about. Oh I have no idea. What? That they would win one? About? That they would win one? He's 63 Burrow, all of a sudden setting in no, for Pete. It was Joe Burrow would win one in 10 years. He's we're halfway we're there. there. Two, two Super Bowls in 10 years is what I heard the prediction was. Well, it, you know what? If they block somebody in that final play of the Rams game, they would have had one it, What if? B -B -B -D. We're oh, halfway there, Pete. <laughs> we're halfway there. Chase was wide open. That's the theme, though, for the Bengals, right? 0-2. They get off 
slow. It's almost like it's just their thing now. Um, let's talk about Kirk Cousins and the Falcons because there was uh, – you're already shaking your head. I haven't even gotten the whole yeah. sentence out. Um, you know, coming off this Achilles injury and there was a sense that, hey, he's going to unlock all of these weapons on offense, right, with with Drake London and, and Bijan and Kyle Pitts. And, Pete, that was just not the case. Well, he was awful. The offensive line, which is supposed to be a strong point of that team, was bad. Uh, they didn't get much done. And, and Kirk Cousins didn't look like he was driving the football like he normally did. And I think there's some uh, real impact from what happened to him with his Achilles tendon. And, and now they go on the road and play the Eagles, and they're staring 0-2 in the face. I didn't think they were going to be a playoff team, but I didn't think they would play that bad offensively in week one. They have to fix that. Really, really poor showing for the Falcons offensively. And to me, it just spells a little bit of disaster. It means to me that Kirk Cousins is not healthy, to your point. He's not all the way there. And if he's not healthy and you Which can't... Which he says and you he can't is. Run he the claims offense, he is, but... You can't run the offense the way it's supposed to be ran. Let the other guy in there and run. Yeah. Because what is that offensive line built to do? And to Pete's point, they want to run the football. They want to run the football, have the suck of that defense up at the line of scrimmage. Next thing you know, play action shots over the top. That's what they did out west for a while with this coach. I didn't see it yet. I'm afraid that Kirk Cousins can't get to the top of his drop, put his foot in the ground with confidence, and drive out and, and throw those balls down the field. They must have told him it was a big game. Oh, oh, here we go. Prime time? I can't remember. What time no, was it? It wasn't in prime time, but it was, it was an afternoon. opener. This week is in prime time, though. Would so, you throw Michael Penix in there just to kind of no, see it for No, not yet. Drive? I mean, yes. you know <laughs> you're giving up on Kirk Cousins? Already? No, I'm not I'm giving not up on Kirk Cousins. I'm I say if you're not healthy, him get him out so he, he can he, run the offense he says that he's your healthy. coach has designed. He says he's healthy. He says he's healthy. Well, show me that you're healthy. Okay. All he's, right. We've been talking a lot of bad. Let's go to some good. Uh, there's a lot of love for Baker Mayfield on this desk right now. Pete, you like him as a player, you like him as a guy. I am biased from the Oklahoma perspective, and he got Jacqueline Diagostino 37 points. points. Baller. Baller. He's got the fire in the belly, Pete. He does have the fire in the belly. They love him in Tampa, and he showed out the other night. I mean, look, that's not a great Washington team, let's be real. Don't take this away from her. No, uh, look, I love watching him play like that, and he has 37. playmakers. My guy, Jalen McMillan, the rookie, he got a touchdown. Uh, they're going to have an explosive explosive offense and the offensive line doesn't get enough do. Graham Barton now being their starting center gives them a real presence in the middle of that line. Luke Gedeke an underrated right tackle. Tristan Wirfs your guy is the left tackle. I love this offense. Defensively I'm worried this week because they're so banged up in the secondary and that's always a concern when you go play the Lions. I know the Lions didn't throw it around that well last week, but this could be a game where both teams get a little up and down the field. You know, we look around the NFL this year and, and all years, really, and, and you can kind of get that, uh, you know, you get the tight shot on the quarterback on the sideline and it kind of tells their mood. You know, we saw Deshaun Watson down in the dumps on the sideline, Bryce Young on the bench. Baker Mayfield is an all-vibes guy. He is a man's <laughs> man, a dude's dude. This is the kind of guy that every offensive lineman wants to block for. They will Drain down the field when he tucks it and runs because he's a dude. That's an unquestioned leader. All vibes team, Baker Mayfield. You think Cleveland wouldn't mind having him back right Ooh. about now? Ooh. Nice trade, guys. Nice trade. Uh, give them the name of your fantasy team, and I want to see if they get it. Uh, yeah, oh, this this is going to be very telling because I'm going to know. Who... I'm going to look so dumb when no, I don't. No, 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 no. I have a feeling you'll both get it. It is um, Bake It Off because oh, he is my, yeah, yeah, my yeah. quarterback. Why, why? Shake it off. Oh, yeah, good job. Go. Are you a Swifty Kyle? My wife and I just got tickets to go see her at the Hard Rock uh, at some point. Were they the ones fall. that Pete sold? They're probably the ones I sold. sold. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I got, I got fleeced in yeah. that deal. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I did the fleecing. Uh, Our bank called us like, is this you? <laughs> Kyle, you had Pete on this morning on Pushing the Pile. Yep. Let us know what went on. Yep. Or Pete, let us know. Well, Either one of you. They ripped, ap they ripped apart my power rankings. We had a draft of offensive line, which I clearly won. And Jeez, uh, and then we also gave out some awards. It was, it was a lot fun. of fun. The yeah. awards, you know, come check out me, Pete, and Mike Renner on Pushing the Pile.